right, we have some unfinished business with the last example that we'll wrap up today. Um, if I recall correctly, we had our search working, which was fine. Um, we had our clicking on a link to take the person to the next page working fine. Uh, the next page showing all the detail about the selected person. All right. Um, what we didn't have is two pieces of the detail. The one piece being the image of the person. All right. And the other piece of detail being um, the list of students that that faculty member advises. So we'll take a minute to take a couple minutes to do a couple different things. First of all, review what we do have. Secondly, look at the code view for it. Um, I emphasize again, whether you use the code view or the GUI view, um, it doesn't matter. You, you need to be able to understand the code. And uh, that will be valuable for you as you go to troubleshoot um, what it is that, that you come, on, come up with. You know, if you use a GUI tool and everything works okay, fine. You, know, you may fool yourself into thinking that you can do everything with that and that you don't need to be able to examine and understand the code, but, but that would be mistaken. So let's do those two things and then we'll build upon that and add the image and add the list of students. Just going in and opening what we have from last time. shame if we lost what we did last time, if that is the case, I'll be optimistic and say that what we can do is recreate it quickly now that we know what we're doing. Just to review what we had last time, we had a details page. I'm sorry, we had a default page that shows a listing of all faculty members that meet our search criteria. We then have a details page such that when you click a link um, about the faculty person, it brings up their information. So let's go and run this and see. Whenever you create an application, it's probably good to have your first page called default because that's what the web server is expecting. Well, not an absolute requirement. 
that's a good idea. Alright, and as we go and search, and we can click on details and see the full details about that one person. All right. On the default page, what we have is we have a text box. That's not bound to anything. All right. We're going to talk about binding all sorts of visual controls to things, but again, remember binding relates to whether you want the, the values of that particular form element to be controlled by values from the database. In the case of the text box, no. We, we certainly want to take what we've put into the text box and use it to query the database, but the text box itself is not bound to the database. We have a grid view that's going to display our stuff. We have a SQL uh, data source, which is the connection to the database, <coughs> includes a connection string, and uh, includes our SQL statement. And if we look at our SQL statement, and this was sort of the big thing that we discovered last time, our SQL statement contains a parameter. That is, it contains a blank that's going to be filled in at runtime. filled in at runtime is represented by a whoops by a question mark. So in this case we want to pull up everyone whose name starts with a certain letter and that letter we're going to determine at runtime based on what has been typed into the text box. So our blank is represented by the question mark. The plus percent sign is the wild card used for like. All right. What is very useful in doing this, if you're at all confused about like how to create the parameters or, or something like that, my suggestion would be to write out a specific SQL statement to pull one specific, based on one specific piece of criteria. So for example, for this one, I might say something like, Let's say if I was looking for everyone whose name started with Z, my SQL statement would look like that, where FL name is like Z parenthesis. Once you've done that, you can look and say, oh, this I want to vary. Sometime I want it to be Z, sometime I want it to be B, sometime I want it to be HUF, or whatever. So therefore, that is sort of our blank in this statement that's going to be filled in at runtime. That's our parameter. So we go and we represent that this way, question mark plus percent sign. All right. Let's look at the code for this, the code view for this. And you'll notice as we view this, everything that we set via the GUI, we can see how that got generated into the code. All right, there's our text box and button. Here's our grid view. And the grid view has all the parameters that we set. It has some of these color parameters based on the auto format that we chose. All right, it has that alternating row style based on the auto format we chose. Probably most interesting is these. It has some bound fields. And the bound field relates to um, what field it connects to in the SQL data source. So we have a bound field. The data field is FF name. We have our header text. And finally, we have the sort expression we want to use with that. 
and we have those three. We then have next to it a hyperlink field. And the value that we're going to put in the URL is FID. How we're going to format that is we're going to put that in wherever there is the curly bracket zero curly bracket. So whatever the, the FID is for that particular row is going to be used in constructing that link. So our link will be details.aspx ID equals 1 if their ID is 1, 10 if it's 10, and so on. Here's our SQL data source, and again, notice that our select statement has a parameter in it, and then we have these select parameters where we specify where those blanks are going to get filled in from. Now, we did all this through the GUI last time, but again, it's important, and I think it's valuable, especially the first few times you do this, if you use the GUI to create this, to go back and look at the code that gets generated just so that you see where everything goes. All right? That's very useful if you're doing troubleshooting. Because, again, remember, it's, I, I've seen cases where the code it generates isn't correct. It generates one too many or too few parameters or whatever. So it's important to be able to sort of go through here and figure out what's wrong by viewing the code. This is simply saying that we're going to pop in that question mark the value that comes from text box name, specifically the text value, which is what would expect. The details page is pretty much the same, with the exception of two things. One thing is it has a details view as opposed to a grid view. A details view is meant to show one row from a data source as opposed to multiple rows. The first page uses a grid view because if we do a search based on the first letter of a name, we could get several people. Therefore, we wouldn't want to show them in a details view. We'd want to show them in a grid view. All right. Um, this page, though, since we're selecting one particular person based on their faculty ID, by definition, we're only going to get one person, right? Because the FID is unique, and all we're going to get is one person. And we are displaying uh, all the fields associated with that person in a details view. But we're only getting one person, all right? If we're to look at our code here, the details view, again, is a one option. The details view and grid view share a lot of properties together. They, they look the same. They're a different control, but they look the same. Um, more than likely, if we were to look through the ASP.NET framework, we'd see that they shared a common ancestor. All right? In other words, uh, one object-oriented concept that we really haven't talked about in this class is the concept of inheritance, where you have a parent class that has certain characteristics, and then you have children classes that are more specialized versions of this. So they're probably both the grid view and details view because they share so much in common, probably come from a common parent somewhere down the line. I don't know exactly where, but if we research back, we could probably see where that comes from. Now, the details view is one difference. The other difference is that instead of grabbing our parameter from the text box, we grab the parameter from the query string. And it's in the query string field that's called ID. All right? That corresponds to how we've created our link. If you remember back on the first page, our link was something like details, ID equals, and then we were popping in the FID. Well, we put the ID on the query string when we create the link. On this page, we have to pull that ID off the query string to, to retrieve the correct person. All right. Any questions about any of this? Let's add image to the equation here. All right. I just so happen to have a set of images 
that correspond to these people. And I'm going to go and I'm going to pull that images folder into my application. The application folder, again, being the folder that contains the web config file. That's where your application lives. And if we notice, the image names are simply their last name JPEG. We're not going to assume that's the case, though, right? Because what if someone has two, what, what if there's two people with the same last name here? Let's look in the database. Because if we look in the database, we will see that in the faculty table, there is actually a column for faculty image. And it stores the name of the image, the file name of the image. So I don't know why Blanchard doesn't have his image. But I'll go and fill that in for Blanchard. But if you notice, again, in this database, there's a column called faculty image. And that image contains the name of the image, the file name of the image. That's one thing that sometimes students get confused about because one of the access data types <coughs> is like an Olay object or an attachment where you might think we actually store the image in the database. We don't store the name of the image in the uh, I'm sorry, we don't store the actual image in the database. We store only the name of the image in the database. Again, think about what our job is here. Our job is to construct some HTML tags that are going to display the image. What do we need to construct that image tag? We need to know the name of the image. All right? We don't need the actual bytes of the image. We need the name of the image to construct that image tag, because we're going to say image src equals something, something, something. All right. So let's get back to our grid view, or detail view, rather. If I run this, and I do a search, I get an error because I already have that table open. I'm not sure what I changed, so I'll answer no. Let's try this again. All right. If we click that, notice we get that string. But that's not what we need, right? We don't need the name of the image displayed here. We want to display the actual image here. So what we'll see now is how to create that actual image on the details view. <coughs> now the principle for creating the image is very similar to the principle for creating the link. If you remember, when we created the link, we had some stuff that was hard-coded, all right, namely the fact that we wanted to go to details.aspx, question mark ID equals, and then we put code in to say, hey, finish this link out by grabbing the ID from the data source and popping it at the end of the query string. So it then said ID equals 5 or 20 or whatever the ID of the person was. All right? Now, we're going to do a similar thing here. All right? If we go to the details view, and we edit the columns. You'll notice one of our choices is an image field. Just like before, one of our choices was a hyperlink field, right? Where it would create a link and we could configure that link to include data from our data source. Right now, we have an image field that we can configure to allow us to include data from our data source. 
So I'll click image field, add. All right. And again, it's very similar. All right. We have a URL field and a format statement. All right. Now, let's look at <coughs> how the image tag should be constructed. All right. All the images are in a folder that are under that is underneath our page in a folder called images. So, if we wanted to make an image tag for Blanchard, what would that look like? Well, ideally it would look something like this. Image source equals images slash Blanchard dot JPEG. The alt text should say picture of Blanchard. And that's probably it. That's probably our image tag. Alright. Now, what's going to be different between this and a hard-coded? You know, this is our hard-coded one. What's going to be different between this and what we actually want to create. Well, this corresponds to the field called faculty image in the database. This corresponds to the field called faculty last name. So we want to replace these two things, oops, we want to replace these two things with the appropriate fields from the database. And we're able to do that by doing the same sort of thing that we did with the link. Remember with the link we had a similar situation where we wanted our link to be something like this. A href equals details.aspx question mark id equals one, let's say. That one we wanted to replace with a value from the database. You're going to be seeing this theme over and over and over again, where portions of what we want are going to be hard-coded. Portions of what we want are going to come from some database value. All right? And we just need to plug that in. So we plug in this in a very similar fashion. We have our image URL field. In other words, where does the URL for the image come from? It comes from the field called faculty image. How do I want to format it? Do I just want the faculty image there? No. I want prior to that faculty image, images slash. So, I'll go here and say I want images, whoops, wrong line. I'll go here and say I want images slash, and then I want to put in the first field in my list of fields. Now there's only one field, so this will always be curly bracket, zero curly bracket. So if we can look at this, the field I have is faculty image there's a URL field name and a URL format. The field name, I have faculty image because that's the name of the field in the database. The format is images slash curly bracket zero. Why? Because I want my URL of my image to have images slash followed by plug in the value of this faculty image right afterwards. I can do the same thing for the all text field. I can say I want the last name to be part of the all. And what I want the all 
tag to say or attribute to say is picture of curly bracket zero curly bracket. So when we define a link or when we define an image that's part of a grid view or a details view, we can bind that link or image to a database column. We can format the URL. We can format the text of a link or the alt text for an image. And we do that by specifying the field from the database we want and then how we want it to be formatted. And where we want the field to appear, we replace with a curly bracket zero. All right. All right, so now let's run this and see what we got. I didn't want to do that. I want to make my start page always default.aspx, so I'll go to set start page. I can search for the people, and then when I click on them, I see Brown in his image. Or if I click on Blanchard, I see Blanchard in his image. Now, if we look at the source for this, we should be able to see where everything came from. Here's the image tag that we're creating. We hard-coded in images slash, and then we said curly bracket zero, where above it we said the field that we wanted from the database was called faculty image. We did the same thing with the all attribute, where we said picture of curly bracket zero, and then we specified the curly bracket zero came from the faculty's <coughs> last name. All right? So we've constructed the link to work that way. Now, let me show you a small uh, thing. Let me make a mistake. Let me go and... Usually everyone tries this once. Let's cut them from there and put them in the app data folder. Something that I said we shouldn't do, right? I just want to verify this. And I'll go in and I'll change that faculty image not to be looking for it in an images folder, but to be looking for it in the app data folder. Oops. Now, notice it doesn't work. Even though if we do a view source, The link is constructed correctly, it's using, it's the same as it was before, it's just using the new folder, yet it's not able to pull that, and the reason it's not able to pull that is there's special security associated with the app data folder that won't let the server serve files from it, and that's to prevent any sort of, um, you know, um, accessing of databases the wrong way, all right, um, all right. So, we'll put those back in place and we'll change it to be back in place and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Now, if I have the actual image, I really don't need the image name anymore, so I'll delete that. And this I'll change to be images. If there was no folder, if, it, if all these images were simply in the same directory as the rest of our application, I would just do curly bracket, zero curly bracket, because there's no folder to prefix the path to it. I'm also going to go in and clean up these headers, just in the interest of doing a good job. 